that be in Yorkshire <laughs> because this is where it happened to us. Yorkshire surroundings. I think it is one of the most beautiful countrysides which I have ever been to. And then to add beauty to this countryside by creating a work of art is a big challenge because you have to do something which fits in here and adds to it and not sticks out from it. And I must say with the help of Slava and Katya I have been really successful in adding beauty to this already beautiful countryside. Slava and I were invited to come to Yorkshire and to help uh, an artist, Subod Kerkar, to create his sculptures and uh, build objects of art. We were more than happy to join and uh, to provide all the technical support, everything that's needed to be of any sort of help and uh, to create something that we wouldn't have created on our own. This is something magical. This is how the two woodworkers from Russia, uh, the Goan based artist, and an amazing site in Yorkshire have met. Thank you. 
came up with an idea that I'm going to create a temple for the ocean in Yorkshire. Uh, that's because uh, ocean has played a very important role in shaping cultures and the culture in Yorkshire is no exception uh, because here uh, the Vikings came in the 10th century <laughs> to the North Sea and they uh, influence uh, the culture here to a great extent, so much so that there are more than 2,000 places here which are, which are Viking names. Uh, we have so many words in English language which come from Scandinavian languages. But when I came here and I decided I need to do a temple of the ocean, all that I brought was the deity. The deity was this disc with the kauri shells from South India. So they arrive here. But the whole idea how, what shape this uh, temple is going to take was essentially influenced to, uh, by my colleagues, Slava and Katya, because I had no idea exactly uh, what will be the shape of this temple. And um, uh, we worked together and ideas germinated. And then uh, these lovely pillars were carved by Slava using his chainsaw. He almost cut them like he cuts butter. And I think without him and without Katya, this would not have been possible. And I'm so very happy that this happened. And uh, now this is just the beginning of the first temple of the ocean. And I'm sure the temples of the oceans are going to reach many shores of the world, along with Slava and Katya.
I'm working on about a hundred discs using different materials. Uh, but the project is not just about materials, it's also about uh, infusing the materials with meaning. Uh, this work is a very good example. Uh, this is about 14 feet diameter disc. Uh, one side of it is covered with pine cones from Yorkshire and the other side is covered, at this side what you see is covered basically with uh, coconut husk. Uh, the coconut husk traveled all the way from Goa. It crossed the Indian Ocean, went to the Red Sea, went to the Suez Canal, crossed the Mediterranean to arrive in England and here uh, in Yorkshire. The idea that I have brought coconut husk all over from Goa and uh, in a way organize a marriage of it with the pine cones from here is poetry. And uh, I have called this work the pineapple disc. That's because uh, pineapple, which is ananas, arrives here uh, somewhere in the 16th century. And uh, that's called ananas. But it looks like pineapples. The pine cones were originally called pineapples. And then the ananas stole the name and they were left with the name pine cones. So this works basically again celebrates the meeting of the East and the West. So welcome to the coconut side of the moon. So this is our last day at the site. We do photo shoots and uh, final touches. So there is a dialogue happening behind me.
I came a year ago uh, for a small holiday with Peter Roberts uh, here in uh, Yorkshire. Uh, he took me for a walk and he owns a large forest and uh, there were a lot of trees which were cut in order to create space for planting trees which were meaningful to him because he wants to create a, a kind of a forest with trees of all varieties from all over. So some of the pine trees were cut and uh, the wood was supposed to be used for firewood. So I really uh, loved these logs and I said, why not create some art with it? And he agreed and that's how I'm here. Uh, this work uh, is called Dialogues, D-I-A-L-O-G. This work is made out of logs and it's called Dialogues. Uh, it's a very political social statement. If we have to describe the present world in two words, these words are telecommunication and terrorism. Never in the history of the world, telecommunication is so very developed and so accessible to everybody. Uh, but in spite of that, there is terrorism. Because I believe that uh, terrorism is a product of non-communication between groups, nations, societies, ideas, religions, when there's no communication, terrorism comes. And it is a big paradox that in this age of uh, super telecommunication, there is actually no, uh, uh, no authentic, uh, meaningful communication. Uh, people talk on the mobiles, people keep talking, but the dialogue is missing. And I basically believe that dialogue is the, the root of reconciliation, of understanding with amongst uh, societies about nations, and dialogues are most essential. Uh, many a times you get a feeling that uh, we are living in a world of monologues. And this work essentially stresses the need for dialogues. We will just take the diameter uh, circumference of this. What's mm what? -hmm. has many levels of meaning. The obvious uh, inspiration for this is a poem by Khalil Gibran, one of my favorite poets. He says, uh, trees are the poems, the sky, uh, the earth writes on the sky. Trees are the poems, earth writes on the sky. And we fell them and convert them into paper to record our emptiness. Well, uh, this was an obvious inspiration for this work, but it has many other meanings in many other levels because in my artistic practice I always try to find ancestry of material. Material interests me very much and I look for the ancestry. Here the books have the ancestry in the trees because the books are made out of trees. The paper is made out of trees. The tree is a kind of a mother and it's like homecoming for the books, getting back in the womb of the mother. Uh, 
this is a work which is also talking about uh, a message to protect environment, to protect trees, to plant more trees. And I'm very glad that here in uh, the Himalayan gardens, the owner, Peter Roberts, has been a very, very uh, enthusiastic tree planter. He has planted thousands of trees and keeps planting. The plant, tree planting activity is going on in full swing here. And uh, I think, uh, as you say, you have to walk the talk. It actually happens here. Gita or any other religious book, art is my religious book.